So without further ado, we have Professor John Japong, uh, Vice Chancellor of the University for Health and Allied Sciences, joining the conversation. It's all about two crucial matters, 10 years of UHAS. What has been the impact of this institution on our national life? You'll be telling us about that. But before we uh, get into that, we'll also talk about the UTAC situation, which has become hugely problematic. And, that, and the last bit I was talking about, UTAC failing to uh, attend that uh, you know, meeting convoked by the National Labour Commission. Uh, our guest this morning on the second belt, Professor John Japo. Thank you so much for joining the conversation, Prof. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. Uh, so even before we get into the UTAG bit, I just want to go back and forth a bit. Uh, six years at post, right? Yes, this is my sixth year. Mm. And 10 years overall uh, as a, an institution. Yeah. Uh, what has the journey been like? Oh, I think the U.S. journey has been a, a good one overall. Um, difficult beginnings, but uh, by and large, I think uh, we are impacting the country the way we ought to. I mean, we started as a university, actually, uh, the Act of Parliament that established the university was passed in December 2011. And the university started its operations in uh, September 2012 with just 154 students. Today, we are over 7,000 in all, mm -hmm. including regular students and uh, sandwich students. So uh, I think it's been a good journey uh, mm -hmm. overall. Of course, with this challenge, uh, which is, is expected in the current tertiary education landscape. Right. Uh, yep. And you are a specialized university. Yes, we are a specialized university. Health and allied we sciences. Focus on health and allied sciences. Mm. Uh, I think one, one of the major challenges that uh, many institutions have had in the past has been what we describe as machine creep. So you set up as a university of uh, science and technology, and then eventually you find out that. Uh, you're doing all oh, sorts oh, of oh, things. Yeah. Yeah. And not just doing all sorts of things. And then uh, you find out about 60% of your student population are doing the humanities. Uh, it's a challenge. Mm. We are determined to be focused on uh, health and allied sciences. But that comes with the challenges. Because you see, financing tertiary education these days is a, is a, is a big issue. Mm. And the sciences and engineering in particular are very expensive. So. In order to break even, you would want to mix with the humanities, which is not usually as expensive as the, the sciences. Right. That is if you don't have the, the necessary core funding. Uh, so that is, that is a dilemma in which we find ourselves. We've been tempted a few times, but uh, we've decided to remain focused on our mission. OK. Uh, let's now get to the, the UTAC situation, the University Teachers Association of Ghana. Like I said, after we've dealt with that, we'll come back to the 10th anniversary yeah. of... of uh, how do you feel about all of this, the developments um, and, and, and this extended strike? I mean, this is the first time in a while that we've had such an extended strike. What do you make of it? Well, I, I think it's, it's uh, unfortunate that we've come to this point. But before I continue, I think uh, <clears throat> I need to make a few disclaimers. <laughs> that I, I am a member of UTAC by virtue right. of being right. a university lecturer. And, and we're fully aware. <laughs> yes. uh -huh. And then also as uh, the vice chancellor appointed by the university council on behalf of government to manage the university, mm. sometimes I'm also seen on being there on the other side. Right. So <clears throat> it's been an issue of trying to thread cautiously to try and manage the situation. Mm. But having said it all, nobody wants a strike on their hands. Nobody wants such an impasse on their hands because eventually it affects students, it affects the, the parents of students, and it affects the, the general population. And uh, even the faculty, the lecturers themselves, uh, don't enjoy it. I mean, I, I don't think anybody is enjoying what is going on. Uh, I think it is an issue which uh, we need to try and deal with as quickly as possible. In terms of this strike, it has brought academic you know, work to practically a standstill. Yeah. Um, uh, 
some students have even left you know, their institutions for home, as, as we know it. And we've had different organizations speak to it. Uh, NOOCS has spoken to it. USAC, has USAC is actually embarking on a demonstration that they, <clears throat> they, they are planning on hitting the streets and all of that. The conditions of service we are speaking of, I mean, some of them go as far back as single spine in 2013, then the 2019 reliefs and all of that. And then last year's petitions that, you know, the jaw jawing that did not see the light of day, which has culminated in, in all of this. Uh, have you been hard done as an association? Have you been hard done? You've, you've gone to the negotiating table a number of times, but your, your requirements have simply not been met. Have you been hard done? I think I, w I would rather not get into the details of whether one has been hard done mm. or not. Uh, in the first place, I don't speak on behalf of UTAG. Right. Uh, but you're a crucial but, player as but, vice chancellor of yes, the, yes, the institutions. Yes, yes. I, I, I accept that as, as a very key player in the field. Mm. And uh, as to people embarking upon strikes and students mm. going on strikes and all that, yeah, I think, I think that is the rights of, of every institution or every body and all that. But uh, eventually, that is not what is going to solve the problem. And uh, we need to sit around the table and talk. Mm. And Vice Chancellor Ghana has been doing this uh, all the while. Uh, indeed, in the strike that occurred last year, uh, Vice Chancellor Ghana was at the I mean, seat <laughs> around the table to basically facilitate all the agreements that we had. And uh, we continue to do that from the background and uh, talk to government, talk to, uh, to UTAG, to ensure that there is peace and harmony. I think that that is all I want to say as to whether one has been hard done or not. I, I wouldn't get into, into those, those, those details. Because as, as you earlier alluded to, uh, yesterday, uh, following the court decision, NLC called for right. uh, a meeting. And uh, we are told that UTAG did not honor the meeting because, as they've always put it, they don't trust the right. NLC. <clears throat> Through its lawyer, it, it, it yeah. made it clear that it, was, yeah. it wasn't going to be there. Yeah. So, so Vice Chancellor Ghana is working uh, <laughs> behind the scenes to try and facilitate a discussion. Even as you work behind the scenes, yeah. is that a, I mean, the, the stance adopted by UTAG, is, is, are you supportive of it? You, you just said one thing, we need to sit and talk. Yes. Uh, the NLC invited you to sit and talk. And uh, UTAG, I know you don't speak for UTAG, but yeah. UTAG, of which you are a member, yeah. decided we don't want to talk. Do, do you feel that was not in the best interest of all parties, including the students who are suffering? Well, the, the NLC did not invite the students. They invited UTAG, the, the NEC, the National Executive Committee, right. of which I'm not a member. Right. Uh, but I can tell you for a fact that uh, this afternoon, uh, Vice Chancellor Ghana, UTAG, and uh, the employer uh, are going to have a meeting. Mm. So all is not lost. I, I sincerely believe that once we sit around the table, uh, there will be some give and take, and then we, we move on. We all want to put this behind us. So um, without, without saying too much, <laughs> that is all I can say. So you vice chancellors are meeting, but, but there's not going to be, I, I mean, this is not with government, this is not with, so how, how, no, no, why, why no, do you think, or, no, is it, or is it a broader no, meeting? No, it is a meeting, let, let, let's say the meeting that in a way NLC was trying to call, which UTAG refused to attend, mm. Uh, Vice Chancellors Ghana and government and UTAG are going to sit around the table uh, this afternoon. Okay, so, so basically what failed to happen yesterday is going to happen today? Without NLC. Without the NLC? Yes. Why? Is it because the NLC is a problem? I, I, I don't want to get into that. As I said, I don't speak for UTAG and I've never engaged NLC in recent times. But I believe that the court said that the employer and the employees should talk right. as to whether it is facilitated by NLC or facilitated by 
Vice Chancellor's Vice Ghana. Ghana. I think at the end of the day, we want a solution. So let's, let's leave it at that. Are all of you going to be there, the vice chancellors? I mean, is that the, the agreement? We, we had hoped so, but uh, as you know, there are 16 of us now, and we are scattered all over the country. Mm -hmm. So not everybody would be uh, present, but there are some core members of the negotiating table who, who would be around the table. At least a, a core group that would be able to represent the entirety yes, yes. of our yeah. former quorum. Yeah. Uh, how hopeful are you that today's uh, meeting will you yield the, the the results that most people in the country want. Look, we also in the 90s especially when strike this, strike that, and students and no one wants this. It affects the academic calendar. People are paying money. They are not getting what they, they, they bargain for. I mean, how, how quickly do you think today's meeting could resolve this? I, I can only be hopeful. Mm. I can only be hopeful. I mean, I don't have any assurances from UTAG, I don't have any assurances from government, but there is nothing in this world, there is no problem, as the Akans will say, that has come that to view the knife to, to, as it were, divide it or whatever. Right. Right. We need to sit down and talk. Mm. And once we've agreed to sit down and talk, I think we will hopefully make some progress. And uh, I can only hope. Because, you see, all of us want a solution. I think that is the, that, that is, that is the, the a common uh, scenario amongst us. We all want a solution to the problem. Uh, we may have different aspirations and uh, hope that certain things would come our way. But in negotiations, it's an issue of give and take. So I, I pray and hope that this afternoon we'll be able to, to get by in, in, in trying to arrive at some conclusion. Because otherwise, you see, some students, I think for those who have been on K University campus, they've been there for almost four weeks now. Uh, some universities have been open for three weeks. Others have been open for two weeks. Mm. We cannot continue to keep our students on campus sitting down, doing nothing, and uh, spending the little money that has been given right. to them by their parents and all that. So we need to have a solution to this. But, uh, how, just give us a fair reflection of how this has panned out on your campus. University for Health and Allied Sciences, how, how it has reflected on students and, and student life, basically, teaching? I think it's very similar to what happens on other campuses. You know, in the past, I, I mean, I, I studied in KNUSD and I worked in Legon before moving to, to UHAS. In the past, when these strikes occurred, uh, the medical students and the health sciences were allowed to have their way in, in, in some way. I mean, the, yeah. because the teaching would happen in maybe in Kolebu or Konfanochi, the other faculty turned a blind eye. And especially also because the program of the medical students was an all year round thing. So they tended to turn a blind eye on it. But this time, it hasn't been the case. And for us, our main focus is health and allied sciences. So it's like everybody yeah. needs attention. And uh, so everybody is sitting in their hostels doing some private studies and uh, just walking around. And it's not good for uh, the country, it's not good for the economy, and it's not good for anybody at all. So we need to get over this. Uh, the 21-day rule, just to wrap so that we can move on to you has proper and your 10th anniversary. Mm. The 21-day rule where some uh, say after 21 days, schools shut down and all of that. Uh, some institutions have that, you know, in, in their statutes, if you like. Do you have that at UHAS? We don't. And uh, I'm not aware of any institution. Because I, 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 I know, I mean, the other day we were speaking to Dr. Bert Bwedikusi, uh, who is president of UTAG at UCC. Okay. And he mentioned that they, for example, have it. Some institutions do. Not all of the 16 institutions have them. But there seems to be this... Um, unwritten rule, more, more or less, some in written form, others in unwritten form, where after 21 days, you shut down. Okay. Do you have that? And if you don't, no. uh, is there any anticipation that when, I mean, I, I think we've hit the 21 days. We, we, is there we, going to be a shutdown? We don't have it. And I, I came out of Legon. Mm. As far as I know, I think I know the Legon statutes very well. Legon doesn't have it. Mm. Uh, you know, there are some regulations on the management of students' academic work and things like that. For instance, there is 
I, I can't recall exactly what it says, but in the student's handbook, there will be something to the effect that if students uh, miss lectures for 21 days. Yes. Yeah. So I think in some way, that is what some people are interpreting mm. on the other hand. So that well, well the UCC one, one is uh, very clear. I, I think it's kind of because Dr. Nikusi said it. But seen. so in, in the other context, this could it. be what would be I, used I, or referenced. I as haven't as well. seen it. Right. But you see, if they say if students absent themselves, the students haven't absented themselves. Right. So uh, it, 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 it's, it's a different thing altogether. Mm. Assuming that was what one was referring to, the students haven't absented themselves. Mm. Let's get back to the University for Health and Allied Sciences. Ten yes. years on yes. and six years at post. You are in your sixth year. So the sixth, sixth and last year. year. Sixth and last year. Yes. Uh, you're not hoping to, or your constitution does not allow you to, to go further. Oh, my, by, by statutes, I'll turn 60 this year. So. All oh, right. Uh, right. I, I, your, gray, I, your gray hairs are counting. So <laughs> I, I, I it's have, time for you to rest your back. I have to retire by, by law. Uh, but, but I know there are instances where, I mean, some of you can be commissioned based on your expertise and all of that so that you can stay on for a while. Is that not something you're looking forward to? Oh, no, 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 not at all. I, I think that uh, it's, it's time for other people to also come and demonstrate what they can bring on board. Uh, we had a first the foundation vice chancellor, Professor Benka, who was there for four years, and uh, the lot fell on me to continue. I believe there are many other... Uh, better people out there, and if there is a need for us to, to support them, we will do so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many of you, I mean, quite a number of you, 16 of you, the, these public institutions and all of that, and, and myriad uh, private institutions of higher learning. Yeah. What would you say has been the contribution of UHAS to our national life over these last 10 years? <clears throat> I think... A major contribution, of course, has been in the area of uh, human capacity for the for our healthcare delivery. Mm. We have contributed very significantly. If you look at the way the university is structured, <clears throat> the actually currently there are only two universities, as far as I recall, whose mandate uh, are very clearly stated in the act of parliament that establishes them. Mm. As the University of Health and Allied Sciences and the University of Energy and Natural Resources. Indeed, when you talk about UHAS, the act says that we shall have eight schools and three institutes. And the eight schools are our School of Medicine, School of Pharmacy, School of Basic and Biomedical Sciences, uh, Public Health, uh, Dentistry, uh, Nursing and Midwifery, uh, which other one have I missed? They will kill me for missing, <laughs> <laughs> for missing the I know we can get confusing very quickly. <laughs> Allied Health Sciences. Okay. And there is an eighth one which I can't remember offhand. It, it would be tricky to get all of them, uh, you know. Yeah. But, but of course, we but, know there are yes. eight of them. Yeah, there, there, there are eight schools. And we, are, and we are training all the health professionals that the country needs. Mm. But beyond that, beyond training people from the senior high schools, right. we are also helping in upgrading the skills of many, many, many more uh, health professionals who need top-ups for their, for, their, for their skills and qualifications and all that. You know, we all go through different pathways as far as our education is concerned. Not everybody gets the opportunity to go from uh, secondary school into university immediately. Some, uh, by virtue of fate and other challenges that may come their way, they end up doing some diploma programs and things like that. But it doesn't mean they cannot do degree programs. So over the last couple of years, we have embarked upon a, a program, a sandwich program, right. which trains many nurses and other health professionals. And I can tell you that our place is a place of choice as far as the the, the sandwich programs are concerned. We currently have over 3,000 sandwich students who, mm. who come to us at specific times to get their skills upgraded in nursing, midwifery, public health nursing, the allied health sciences, disease control officers, epidemiology, 
field technicians, all of them. They come over, health information technology people, they all come and we upgrade their skills to the degree. And some have even come back to do their, their masters, right. which, which is very, very impressive. So we, we believe in not leaving anybody behind. And for that reason, we have impacted, I mean, the health, the health uh, sector very, very significantly. Mm. We <clears throat> had our, our first batch of doctors uh, produced two years ago. Right. And of course, uh, 10 years, so you look at about a seven to eight year window. Yeah, we actually are our, our, our medical students. When, when we started our school of medicine, we didn't start with the MBCHB program immediately. Right. Yeah. So they lagged behind a bit. I think the second or third year, then we started our, our, our medicine program. Uh, so we graduated our first batch, and now we've graduated, actually we've graduated two batches. Mm. And uh, if you speak to the Medical and Dental Council and uh, our regulators, they were overwhelmed with the quality of products that we have from you. They were completely overwhelmed. How many again? How many were they? Well, the first batch was, I think, 45 or thereabout. Mm. And the second batch is also around 50 or thereabout. Right. So, so, this, so we have, this, so we have about space of time. You've you've produced about at least hundred doctors, doctors yeah. for, for Ghana. Yes, and not just doctors. I mean, we have our first batch of uh, farm D students. That's the pharmacy program which runs for six years. Mm. They will be graduating this year. Uh, I mean, our pharmacy program also started uh, just about six years ago. You know, so and then but beyond that, the nurses and midwives and public health nurses and allied health scientists. And by allied health scientists, I'm referring to physiotherapists, laboratory, um, um, medical laboratory scientists, um, dietetics students, and uh, uh, people who are uh, trained in health, uh, sorry, uh, are here in sciences. I mean, there's so many of them. Mm. Now we've started a program on orthotics and prosthetics. Oh, wow. Yes. The, the, the only program you can find in sub Saharan Africa. Wow, prosthetics. Yes. yes. Because it, it, it's also a very expensive area to go into. Prosthetics don't come cheap. Yes. Now we also started, ah, oh, now the school I forgot was the uh, school of sports and sports exercise. exercise. Uh, in fact, I'm looking at the <laughs> list here. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, basic and biomedical sciences, yes. allied health sciences, yes. nursing and midwifery, yes. public health, yes. pharmacy, yes. school of medicine, yeah. school of sports and exercise yes. medicine. And of course, there's also the basic school, which yeah, I'll be yeah. talking to you about. Oh, oh OK. Right. All right. So, so now, now we have programs in uh, sports and exercise medicine, mm. uh, and it, it's it's amazing the way the students are engaging with the National Sports Council or is it now National Sports Authority? Yeah, working with them towards uh, 2023. What is 2023? Uh, the uh, All African Games. Mm. Uh, our school is partnering the National Sports Authority for the, the All African Games. I see. So we, we are impacting the, the, the country in a very in interesting ways. way. I see you spoke about institutes as well, the Institute of Health Research, Institute of Traditional and Alternative Medicine, and you have centers and directorates yes. as well, yes. too many to yeah. uh, even uh, count. So quite, quite impressive uh, what you've done uh, so far. You are one of the youngest public universities in, in Ghana. Yes. And, and you're making quite some strides. So before we, we look at some of the things that you'll be doing with it, uh, as you mark this anniversary, uh, we also notice that KNUSD, uh, uh, Legon, others, they have basic schools. You yes. seem to be following that route. I think you had your first graduation recently. Yes, uh, our basic school is something which <laughs> I was pushed into, into putting in place. Uh, didn't you want to do it? No, not that I didn't want to do it. But you know, when you have a limited pot of money, you want to focus on your core business. But when your faculty are not happy with the quality of schools and your environment, and they want the typical university primary, mm. you can't overlook it. So after a lot of thinking through, we decided that we'll bite the bullet. It costs us a bit of money, uh, because we like to do things good. Mm. Our, our basic school is probably the best basic school you can find in the country. Mm. Yes, I can assure you of that. I, I mean, after one year, you're making those... Oh, but I'm, I'm referring to by way of infrastructure. 
Okay. By way of infrastructure, it's, it's probably the best you can find around. Mm. So we've done a lot of investment. And that attracts the best quality. Mm. You know, because, you see, you may have somebody, uh, let me take a, a, a specialized field, like maybe cardiothoracic surgeries. You, you want a cardiothoracic surgeon to move to Ho to come and work in your university. And he says, well, my children go to school at, uh, which one shall I refer to? Say, Northridge Lyceum, or uh, Christ the King, or Morning Star. Will I get a school like that there? Mm. Uh, I mean, the basic schools in Ho are good, but I am not sure they are of that quality that so, so this is of a very high standard. Very high standard, you know. So we have to invest in it, and that is bringing in a lot more people uh, who feel committed. Let me just go back to the Utah conversation briefly, and it's because you made mention of that small pot of money yep. that you have as an yep. institution. Yep. I recall uh, mention was made, and I've forgotten who exactly, uh, I don't know whether it was Professor Jampo, so I'm being careful here, yep. uh, said that uh, if you were given certain leverage when it comes to the funds you generate and all of that in terms of their use as public institutions, then you could even take care of uh, some of these, uh, <laughs> not emoluments, but uh, allowances. allowances and others that, you know, the employer, government is struggling with. It just hit me. Uh, wh what do you think of that now that you talk of your limited pool of money? Is that something you subscribe to? Uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a long discussion. This started... What is the short of it? Oh, well, 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 let, 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 let me explain. Because, you see, when you have student population of regular students, 4,500, your overheads are so small. Mm. Compared to the University of Ghana, which may have about 80,000. Tens 000. of thousands. KNUS, which may have maybe now close to 100,000. I don't know the exact numbers. Winneba and UCC, around 80,000 there about they can talk that way. Mm. If that is in terms of wanting to use, use given the leeway so yes, they can use their funds yes. for that. So assuming that there was even uh, 200 CDs overhead that comes from every fees that is paid, there are huge numbers there. But if you take a uh, place, you have. If you take UMAT in, in, yeah. in Takwa, and, yeah, and then UNER, we are all doing around 6,000 there. But so it doesn't, it's a drop in the ocean. So it can be a good policy, but government will have to continue to support the smaller universities. Yeah. Actually, there was a point in time, I think it was in 2015 or 2016 thereabout, where there was a discussion of, of weaning off some of the bigger universities mm. to operate like GIMPA. I mean, in all this strike, you haven't heard of GIMPA. Nope. Gim GIMPA is running. Yeah. Because uh, they get some small subvention from government, they are allowed to manage their resources and all that. So we, we, need, we need to balance that. And if we went that way also, we should also be willing to allow the free markets to operate. Right. So if you say I should pay my lecturers or give them the necessary allowances, then you can't tell me that for medicine, which everybody knows the private universities around are charging around $12,000 thereabout. Right. And you'd say that I should charge 2,000 C. So that would have to change. That would have to change. Right. Then you talk about uh, the inequities and the inequalities and people not having the opportunity to access uh, some of these uh, institutions then we must put in place the necessary uh, granting system mm. so that nobody is left behind irrespective of their financial status and their ability to pay. Right. It, it, it is feasible, but we need to think through it very carefully. So it's the long haul. Yes. Uh, if you can manage this in a minute and a half, tell us about what we can expect as you uh, mark your 10th anniversary. <clears throat> you have an entire program. Yes. What are some of the things you're looking at this year? Well, we, we want to... Uh, for want of a better phrase, uh, make the right noises for people to know that we are there and we are impacting society. Mm. And we want to start with our immediate environs. We have a campus in Hohoi and Ho. The bigger campus is in Ho, but we have a campus in Hohoi. The School of Public Health is based in Hohoi. Mm. So we want to engage the community right. with all our health programs and screening 
of 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 uh, of, of, of the community for uh, basic ailments and community education on health to to let them feel our presence mm. and facilitate further health seeking behavior mm. uh, because you cannot be a university of health and allied sciences in hohoi and not impact on the community uh, we think that is the that is the first key goal that we want to achieve right. and we are doing this through many community engagement uh, programs and activities which have all uh, been lined up right at the end of the the period we intend to have a a deba with the fanfare to get everybody uh, involved right but also to bring to the need i mean so to the knowledge of the community and to government in particular that with so little this is what we've been able to achieve mm. and that if we're given more resources especially by way of infrastructure mm. we could impact this country very significantly because you see, I, I feel very sad when we do our admissions every year. I mean, we've just gone through an admission cycle where people with very good grades are unable to access programs of their choice. You know, I mean, uh, I went to medical school with aggregate nine in 1980. Mm. Uh, now, if you have aggregate nine, you will not... Access. Even with a six, the ones count and all, the A's and all of yes. that, and you may not make you it. You may not make it. Right. You see. So you see many people coming in to do other programs which are not of their choice. And uh, they go through their programs with a lot of uh, very little enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. they, are just, they are just going through it as if it going was a right route. Yes, as a right of passage. You see, right. Because all these things have implications. Mm. We've now managed to increase our, our class sizes by about 20% mm. in all, 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 all around. But the real determining step is the size of our teaching hospital. Right. Our teaching hospital is a small teaching hospital. So if you have 100 medical students, if you have 300 nursing students, mm. and you have 100 pharmacy students, and allied health scientists, they will be milling around the... <laughs> and that itself has consequences. Has we, we, we have to go, but I, I just want to do this. It, it, just give me a yes or no answer, if possible. Yeah. Uh, Professor Avokel of the UEW, is he a friend of yours, and how do you feel about his reinstatement? Oh, he's, he's a very good friend of mine. Mm. Very, very good friend of mine. Mm. How do you feel I, about when, his when I When I came into office, he had been in office for a year. How do you feel about the reinstatement? Well, we I... We have to go, so... Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the right thing has been done. Mm. If, if wrongs are, are corrected, right. it, it, is, it is in the right direction. Prof. Yadawase. Thank, Thank you so much for joining the conversation, and we look forward to many more great things from UHAS. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, I want to thank Multimedia for giving us the opportunity. I right. hope there will be many more opportunities to tell Hopefully the, so. the, the, the UHAS story. The UHAS around. story. Yeah. Well, uh, we have to go. Professor John uh, Japong joining the conversation this morning, uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Once more, we are very grateful, sir. Thank and you. that is how we draw the curtains on the AM show for another morning. Don't you forget, at 10 and at noon, we bring you our major news bulletins. And we'll be back tomorrow with the AM show. Thank <laughs> you.